Okay, so to get my uh, virus scanner to um, run in time, and not just by by me issuing a command to scan something or other, but to to monitor the actual processes that are in in my computer and monitor files as they're downloaded and as things are accessed, I have to have the Zuko uh, driver loaded. It's called Zuko. It's a Zuko file system. There are two versions of it, and such is the state of Linux Flux, but the Dezuko file system is supposed to be a new and improved version of Dezuko, and it's made for this version of the kernel, and uh, the kernel sources should have the source code for the Dezuko module with it, so you have to make sure you have your kernel sources installed, and also to compile the kernel using the graphical user interface, you have to have Qt3 development installed, and I'll show you both of these if this doesn't take too long to refresh the repository list. I've already refreshed three other times today. Um, come on. Okay, it must be that I have that open somewhere else. Yes, I do. Okay, so let's look for um, QT3. Where's QT3? And you can see I have QT3 development installed there. Other developments it relied on, other dependencies it relied on uh, installed automatically when I pressed accept. And then I also uh, search for kernel source, and there it is. It's right there. So now we're ready to compile our kernel. So I can close this up now. I'm going to abandon my changes. I didn't actually have any changes, but it asked me if I want to abandon, abandon my changes anyway. So I'll abandon my non-change changes, and I will change directories into user source Linux and uh, I'll stop right now and I'll mention a few things that, that I find annoying. Okay, so first off, we found out that for one, uh, the the antivirus software that ships with OpenSUSE, if you download that and the GUI, you won't be able to license the product. So that's a barrier to the desktop. The next thing is is that um, it's it's hard to find the prepackaged software from the, their site, but if you do do that and you run the install, all it's going to do is a um, a scan on command version without the GUI. And if you try to install the GUI from the OpenSUSE control center, it'll look by all appearances that installing that will break something. Which uh, my guess is is that it won't, but I'm not going to try it just yet. But then if you want to have a full featured virus scanner that's going to monitor your, you know, when you go to a web page, which is the way these things propagate, at least in Windows, so I'd be interested to know if, you know, what the virus detection says when I'm doing it from Linux and what it says it's trying to do to my system. Because they, uh, believe it or not, when your browser goes out and surfs the net, it advertises what kind of browser you're using and what operating system you're running. And so by that signature, uh, the virus writers may have their own special version for Linux to make your Linux version a bot. You never know, so I'd like to know that. So I want to have the Dezuko module installed so it's going to monitor those processes. And to do that, I'm going to have to compile my kernel, and you tell that to a lot of Windows users, they're just turned off by it. It's not as hard as it sounds, but uh, then again, I'll just go ahead and go into this. Oh, and uh, some background, and I'll probably stop it and then start again at the beginning of my process of compiling the kernel. The kernel uh, has numerous drivers that come with it. Basically, when you have uh, the Linux kernel is distributed in the form of source code. It can be downloaded from uh, vger.org or kernel.org, I think and compiled from a vanilla kernel, or you can use a kernel that ship with your distribution. And I think that I'm, that's what I'm doing here, and it's probably a good idea to do that because they use a specific uh, name and numbering system. And uh, once you go in to compile your kernel, you have to pick whether you want the different drivers to be, to be um, not compiled at all, compiled as a module, or compiled into the kernel, so it doesn't have to be loaded as a module. Now, what does it mean to load something as a module? It means the drivers are loaded up at, at boot time or when you run the command uh, INS mod. Okay, and uh, if you end up having to load your kernel, any, any of these modules by typing INS mod, there are other procedures to take to get those uh, drivers to actually uh, load up on boot 
when you boot in, you know, so you don't have to do that anymore. Um, in the meantime, the, the number of modules that you actually compile into the kernel and have loadable as modules, all those things affect the robustness of your system and the fact that your kernel was compiled in your own system affects the robustness of it. Now one thing that I found uh, with kernel compilations that I found annoying, I was trying to um, compile a much later version of a kernel and a version of Red Hat that shipped with a 2.4 but that's not the reason why what happened ended up happening. It used to be when you compiled your kernel, you, it would be done in separate steps and it wouldn't blend together and it wouldn't try to do things automatically for you. So you would uh, go ahead, you would make xconfig, and then it would show you the graphical user interface. And this also describes what's going to happen when I show it. And then you'd pick which modules, which drivers you want to be a module, which drivers you didn't want to compile at all and which drivers you want compiled into the kernel as a part of it. And then when that, that was done, it would wait for the next command, and back then, you'd issue the command make bz lilo, and, it, and you'd also have to make a RAM disk first, and then making bz lilo would move the RAM disk into place, update the kernel into place, and update your bootloader at that point when you ran it. Now, it seems as if in the, the later versions of the 2.6, you just doing make x config is going to end up with a result if you save your changes and you let it compile the end result is that it's going to go ahead and put a new um, kernel and ram disk in your boot directory and the system is going to look for that and with the state of flux for the bootloaders um, I'm using grub1 here so I, and it's being controlled by my Ubuntu partition so I'm going to end up having to go into Ubuntu and update uh, the menu.list file in boot grub in my Ubuntu partition to reflect the new name and number for this kernel if it indeed changes. Um, but it's still going to try to it's still going to just go ahead and rename my kernel if, if there is if it needs to be renamed to, to a different version number it may, it may take the slash desktop appendage away I'm not sure I don't think it will but and then um, now, if your hard disk is almost full, and then you decide you're going to download all the source code for a newer version, let's say you're watching this two years later, and now 2.8's out for whatever reason, and you decide to download 2.8 and a 2.6, the version of SUSE, and your disk drive's almost full, well, while you're tr doing the compilation, it'll fill up, the modules won't compile, you won't be able to get around it, but in the meanwhile, the, the kernel will go ahead anyway, even though the modules didn't compile, and go ahead and give, give you a RAM disk without modules and a kernel up there, and so when you try to reboot, even if you get the grub entry, it'll delete the old kernel and the old RAM disk, and then when you try to boot in, you're shit out of luck. You can't boot in, you have a system that's broken. So don't do that. If you're low in disk space, just heed that warning. It used to be in the old days, you could, um, it wouldn't do that kind of thing until you actually said for it to do so, but now it's trying to do everything automatically. Again, that's a trend that I don't like, so I'm going to stop that and I'm going to start the kernel compilation.